Uh, we grew up together. He's a what year. Bishop, uh, Bishop Gumbleton um, was a year behind me in, in the seminary. Um, I was ordained one year before he was. But so we went through school together. Uh, we uh, um, associated with each other. We were camp counselors together. Uh, we played sports together, uh, many times uh, on opposite teams. Um, we, uh, so I've known him almost all my life. And uh, he just decided, you know, that there are important things going on all over the world that the church has to have a voice. Church has a voice, and it's, and it's the voice for, for freedom. It's a voice for justice for people. It's a voice that says people, there's a misuse of power going on. And the church has to speak out against that. The church has to try to build a kingdom of God, which is a kingdom of peace, a kingdom of justice, a kingdom of unselfishness, of generosity, a kingdom of compassion. He believes that, and he works at it day and night. And uh, he's, uh, he's one of our heroes. <laughs> um, to me, it's important uh, you know, when you talk about uh, growing or you know, being friends for life or, or knowing him for so long, because a lot of people will watch this and they'll just say, well, you know, these old guys just talking about the past. But you know, when you talk about the, the, the past, you know, it really comes to life for me. I picture, now, do you, do you play hockey? Because I know he played hockey, right? We played hockey together. Yeah, and to me, it's important. Can you tell, um, was he real competitive at hockey? Or just well, he's extremely competitive at hockey, at, at, at football, at um, handball, at, uh, at, at uh, playing cards. Uh, he, he's very, very competitive. Um, and uh, we, we had some great times. Um, uh, playing against each other and playing with each other. So um, I can speak for his competitive, and, and he's got a drive, he's got a spirit that never quits. Um, he has uh, decided, though, that, um, that war is wrong, that there, there's got to be a nonviolent approach to solving all kinds of problems. And, and that's the path he's chosen, and he's very faithful to it. With priests, because I don't, I don't, I don't know. It's a, it's a generational thing, though. Yeah. I, I'm talking more generational. Yeah. You know, is it because you went through Vatican II and you saw? Um, were you excited by the changes you saw in Vatican II? Because you know the priests coming out nowadays, you know, are they? Oh yes, I, I think the greatest definition of the church came out of Vatican II, being the people of God, and I think that a lot of that has been lost. That uh, it, it's, uh, it's a, it, we see a, a use of power and uh, directives and uh, kind of a uh, uh, status quo and um, uh, that, that change is not necessarily uh, beneficial. I've seen kind of great changes in the Vatican too. I've seen great changes in the liturgy that bring, that bring priests and people and the people together and rather than uh, you know, defining certain things that gotta be done this way and so on. There's much more spirit there's much more soul to, 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 the, to the church today. And I don't want to see that, 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 that spirit shrunk or killed, and it becomes a soulless church. It's interesting. Well, some people try to um, uh, make us think that uh, we have deviated, that we have been unfaithful, that we're being unfaithful to the church, that we're being unfaithful to authority. And um, we, we, we don't do, do these things just uh, uh, at happenstance. We, we, you know, these things are done with great thought, with prayer, and with experience that we have. And we think we are the church. We are the church. We see others deviating. We see sometimes what we call the church sometimes deviating from what this church of Jesus Christ is. And um, we try to be as faithful as we can. Uh, we're not always, I'm, I'm sure, but we, we feel we are the church. 